Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to be talking about the symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency and why this vitamin is so critical to your overall health and why it may be the case that low levels of vitamin B12 in your body right now may account for some of the symptoms that you are experiencing. So in addition to talking about the symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency, I'll also be talking about how to test for it because that's an important part that most people mess up as well as how to replace your vitamin B12 levels with the use of supplements and or food. So regardless of where you're at or where your knowledge level is at, you'll find something beneficial here. So when I talk about vitamin B12 deficiency, I wanna make sure we distinguish the difference between a suboptimal level and a gross deficiency. Now, most of you listening to this are probably in a developed country in the United States, most likely. And in the United States, we're not really seeing um, a gross deficiency, a super low level of vitamin B12 level, which is causing symptoms systemically inside of our whole body. Instead, what most of you probably have is a suboptimal level, meaning your levels are present, they're maybe not enough to flag you as low, but they're not sufficiently high to manage your symptoms. And so that's what I want you to be thinking about as we talk about these. And you'll understand, you'll better understand how important B12 is when we start talking about the symptoms. Because if we have the symptoms of low levels, we can reverse engineer what the vitamin B12 is supposed to do. So let's talk about some of these symptoms right now. Now we have fatigue is the first one. And like I said, you can kind of reverse engineer what B12 is supposed to do for your body if you have a low levels. Um, because if you have high levels, if you have a normal amount, you should have a good amount of energy. So if you don't have high levels, you'll have fatigue. If you don't have high levels, you'll have hair loss, which means vitamin B12 levels are necessary for hair growth. In addition, you might experience weight gain, um, you might experience brain fog, you might have depression, you might have numbness or tingling in your extremities or digits, you might have changes to your tongue, which is usually um, an enlarged tongue, you may have constipation, you may have heart palpitations, and you may have anemia. Now, in general, the, the anemia one and the enlarged tongue, these are more related to advanced cases of vitamin B12 deficiency. So you're probably not going to be experiencing those, at least if you live in the United States. If you live in another country, they may be more likely. But instead, I want you to look at some of these other ones, fatigue, hair loss, weight gain, brain fog, depression. These are pretty minor, we'll say minor, even though they can impact your life significantly. They're minor symptoms for a minor deficiency, but they're still significant that they can impact how you're feeling day to day. And it can be confusing is if you're experiencing fatigue or, or, or um, a hair loss because there's a lot of overlap between B12 deficiency and other conditions as well. So you kind of have to think to yourself, well, is it B12 that's causing this or is it related to some other cause? Which is why testing is important because we can actually look at B12. Now, I will tell you the majority of people get the testing part wrong. And that's because the majority of people, there's really four, four different ways you can test for B12. There's actually more than that, but these are the ones that your doctor is most likely to, to be able to order and look at. So the serum vitamin B12 is what most people look at, and that is the least inaccurate out of every single one. So what'll happen, this happens all the time, we'll have patients will go in, they'll have some of these symptoms we just talked about. They'll say, hey, I have hair loss, brain fog, and I watched this video, and you know it said maybe this is related to my B12, so let's check my B12. So your doctor orders a B12, and it comes back as, let's say, 600, which is well within the normal range. So your doctor says, nope, can't possibly be your B12 because your level is normal. Now the problem with that is the serum B12, like I said, is the least accurate uh, measure of B12 because it doesn't tell you how much B12 is actually being utilized by the body. It tells you how much is in the blood serum or the serum, but it doesn't tell you what's being used by your cells, which is all you really care about. Now it actually is very hard to assess how much function B12 has at the cellular, cellular level inside of your body. Um, we can't accurately do that, but we can look at different methods to sort of assess for that. And one of those is MMA, which stands for methylmalonic acid. Now, in the case of MMA, that's far more accurate than the serum B12. However, it's a little more expensive and most doctors aren't aware of it. So that's something you can request if you'd like to, and I'll explain to you why you may not necessarily need to in just a second. Um, but that is one that you can look at if you want to more accurately diagnose vitamin B12 deficiency. The next thing you can look at is homocysteine, which is part of the metabolism or the breakdown of vitamin B12. So you can look at um, homocysteine levels to see if your body is actually using vitamin B12. And finally, you can look at something called MCV, um, which stands for mean corpuscular volume. And really, this is just a measurement of the average size of your red blood cells. When B12 levels get low, your red blood cells get bigger. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much all that it is. That just 
it just tells you what the size is. Now, if you look at all of these things, you can get a pretty good idea as to what's going on with your B12 level. Now, unfortunately, and well, we'll, we'll let, me, let me explain, let me go back to what I mentioned with MMA. And that is, this is a more expensive way to test for B12 deficiency, although it can be more accurate than serum B12. But at some level, it doesn't really matter because the supplementation that you can use to replace B12 and or increase vitamin B12 consumption in your diet is usually a better way to go anyway because you're ordering a more expensive test which is more expensive than the actual supplement form so it doesn't really make sense there and getting more b12 isn't going to hurt you so at some level it doesn't really matter what your vitamin b12 level tests show unless you're just curious and you want to know because it's safe to just treat as if it were present anyway because it's not going to cause you any problems and it's going to be cheaper and less of a hassle than going and getting all those lab tests now that's just my personal opinion you can you can disagree with me if you want and go get all those lab tests if you'd like just to know what your b12 level is um, or you can kind of go along with my methodology which is just to assume it's present and uh, adopt a healthier lifestyle and feel better in the process but it's up to you now if you are going to use supplements then there are three types that are the best for sure for b12 that includes methylcobalamin hydroxycobalamin and adenosylcobalamin if you are going to take a vitamin B12 supplement, make sure it is one of these because these are the most biologically active forms of B12. They come pre-methylated or pre-activated, which means they don't require steps, additional steps in order to be used. The type I want you to avoid is cyanocobalamin. Now, this is also the cheapest form of vitamin B12 and is most frequently found in just about every supplement. So if you're using a cheap supplement, you're going to find this form. Which is why, by the way, which is why, by the way, some of these other supplements will be more expensive, but it's for a good reason. They're actually useful to the body. So try to avoid cyanocobalamin if you can. Look on the back of your bottle of B12 of whatever you're taking to see if it's present. And if it is, ditch it for one of these three forms because it's going to work a lot better. Now, what if you don't want to use supplements? What if you'd rather use food? Well, you can do that too. That's why I said, just adopt a healthier lifestyle, eat more foods which are rich in vitamin B12, and you'll be better off for it anyway without getting the expensive test. If you would like to do that, these are the foods that are most that contain the highest concentration of B12. So we have beef, we have organ meats, we have tuna, we have fortified foods. So this just means foods that have iron or I'm sorry, have B12 added to them. So I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this option, but one example would be energy drinks. So energy drinks always have a high level of B12 in them because it's been added to that compound. That's probably a, a bad example. So another a better example would be cereal which again is not a good example because I don't really want you eating cereal anyway. But my point is you can actually take B12 and put them into certain foods. So do avoid energy drinks, do avoid cereals, bad examples on both of those, but just know that sometimes foods are fortified with certain vitamins and that applies to vitamin B12. So fortified foods, we have nutritional yeast, we have salmon, we have milk um, and other dairy products as well as eggs. So regardless of whether you wanna do it nat naturally and get it through food or get it through supplement form because you think you'll benefit from them, no matter what, getting more B12, because it's water soluble, is never really gonna cause any problems. And eating more, you're not gonna be in a bad situation because you ate more organ meats or because you had some nutritional yeast or more salmon or things of that nature. So just consuming more B12 at baseline is probably a good idea for most of you anyway. Anyways, especially if you're experiencing some of these symptoms we talked about in the very beginning. So that's what I have for you guys for vitamin B12. Really important vitamin really important nutrient, really important that you replace low levels inside of your body. Look out for suboptimal levels, not just a gross deficiency, which is what most doctors are looking for. Get the test if you want, but don't live and die by those values um, because they're a little bit more expensive. And if you're just getting the serum B12, do not trust that value. So that's all I have for you guys today. And otherwise, I will see you in the next one.